Hello, we have a couple autonomous equation questions to go over. Remember that these are equations uh, completely composed of some variables, determinants, and then uh, that variable itself. And we only deal with first order autonomous equations in this class, it seems. Um, I, I really have no idea whether they exist for, for higher uh, values. We only really have to uh, worry about these types. And these are all to do with at least how they, they ask questions about them. Uh, with their behavior, so uh, whether whether determinants, sorry, derivatives approach infinity as you approach a certain value of y or zero, uh, and and how they behave on either side of those those values is pretty important uh, to us. So we see uh, that as y approaches zero on this graph over here, our determinant it approaches infinity. Um, and as y approaches negative 2 on this graph, the determinant approaches 0. So this is not a very typical uh, question for this general genre of question, but pretty much we're, we're, we're looking for that. And uh, if we just go through these questions, uh, we're looking for, you know, a discontinuity at 0. So we want an undefined uh, y dy over dt for y equals 0, and we want uh, the dy dt to evaluate to 0 at negative 2. So a fulfills that second, uh, second criteria, where if we plug negative 2 in, we get dy dt equals 2, but at 0, dy dt is equal to 2, so that's no good. Uh, additionally, uh, for b, dy dt at 0 is equal to 0, uh, we're not a fan of that. And then skipping C for a second, going down to D, um, at Y equals 0, this does evaluate to 0, but at Y equals uh, negative 2, sorry, yeah, no, there, sorry, I, I, I misspoke slightly. At Y equals 0, this evaluates to 0, which is no good. We, we, we uh, don't want a slope of 0, we want an undefined slope here, and um, at negative 2, this evaluates to some real number. I think that's, that's what, um, oh, yeah, it's undefined, actually, at negative 2. Yeah, so this, this is exactly the opposite behavior that we're looking for, and so that should kind of lead us back to option C, which is uh, the, the inverse, right? So we have y plus 2 on top, so if we plug in y equals 0, um, Sorry, if we plug in y equals negative 2, we will get 0 over negative 2, which is good there. And then uh, if we plug in y equals 0, we will get a discontinuity because we'll, be, we'll have a division by 0, and uh, so c is our answer. 6. Which of the following statements is true about the equilibrium solutions of this autonomous equation? So we're, we're uh, kind of checking the behavior of our system uh, around what looks like three uh, important values. So let's draw a number line here. Uh, we see that dy dt is equal to zero at y equals zero, y equals three, and y equals negative three. If we plug in uh, y equals negative four, uh, we will have negative four times y minus, oh sorry, nine minus 16, that will be a negative times a negative, so we will get an arrow, a second arrow, pointing in the positive direction. And just to be clear, I'm going to remove the, I'm going to remove the arrows from our, our number line. That might help uh, visualize things a little bit. So uh, any values, any solution curves that start uh, under a y value of 3 will flow up to 3 and then uh, asymptotically you know, approach it as t approaches infinity. Then what about for uh, y is equal to negative 1? If we plug negative 1 in, we will get negative 1 times uh, 9 minus negative 1 squared, so that'll be, um, uh, that'll be a positive number. We have uh, negative times positive, so we get um, a negative term, uh, derivative. You can't tell I've been <laughs> also recording uh, linear videos today. Okay, and then if we plug 1 in, we will have uh, 1 times 9 minus 1, so uh, that's a positive value, will flow away from 0 up to 3, and then let's say we have 
uh, 4, 4 times a y value of 4, 4 times 9 minus 16, that will be uh, 4 times negative 7, um, and that will give us a negative slope back down to 3. So we see that uh, 0, we would call it asymptotically unstable, because unless you start exactly at 0, uh, you will always uh, end up away, moving away from 0 uh, to another asymptote as time goes on. So uh, 0 is unstable, and then both negative 3 and 3 are asymptotically stable, because uh, if you start in their, in their vicinity, um, you know, in, in this zone of control, uh, any of these really, so the whole number line, in fact, you will end up flowing towards one of, uh, one of the two solutions, whichever you're closer to, as time goes to infinity. So A uh, should be our correct answer. One, let's identify the differential equation corresponding to this vector, I'm oh, sorry, direction field below. So we see that uh, 2 is an asymptote, 0 is an asymptote. Uh, our, our, uh, I keep saying determinant, our derivative is positive coming up to 0, negative down from uh, 2 to 0, and negative uh, like that. Whenever you see the direction of uh, flow not changing around a value, in this case 2, we're going down before it, we're going down after it, that uh, should be a hint that there is a uh, square uh, involved somewhere. So, uh, because, you know, that, that value is getting, that value is getting squared, so uh, it, you'll see what I mean. If you, if you do enough of these problems, it tends to make sense. So, uh, let's just start testing these solutions uh, for, or well, these equations for this behavior. If we plug in a negative value for a, we will get uh, negative times a negative, and then that square will always be positive. So we get uh, the positive behavior that we're looking for. Then if we plug in, let's say one, we have a negative times a positive times a positive, so that gives us uh, the negative behavior that we're looking for. And if we plug in, let's say, 10, we get a negative times a positive times another positive. Uh, so yet again, we get that behavior. And A is our correct answer. So I hope you can see what I kind of meant about how, um, you know, being, being above 2 or below 2 doesn't change the sign of this term, and it also doesn't change the sign of this term. So you'll see the same behavior on both sides. But there's still that asymptotic behavior uh, as you approach it. If you start above 2, uh, your solution curve can never get down here, uh, but it can inf uh, approach 2 infinitely closely. Okay, seven. Which of the which of the following is a set of unstable equilibrium solutions of this equation here? So we're looking for uh, solutions whose uh, solution curves flow uh, away from the, the this value of y on both sides. So I thought this was a straighter line when I drew it a second ago. Let's redo that. That's kind of uh, worse. So we have. Let's see, we have y is equal to y is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 0, and y is equal to 1. Those seem to be the three uh, solutions for y prime equals uh, 0. If we plug in 0.5, plug in 0.5, we'll get a positive value multiplied by a negative value multiplied by a positive value. That gives us uh, negative value here, so our will flow from 1 down to 0. If we have a y value of 4, we'll get a positive value multiplied by a positive value multiplied by a positive value. Uh, right there, we know that 1 is an unstable equilibrium solution. Then if we have negative 1, we'll have uh, negative 1, so a negative number multiplied by negative 1 minus 1, which is another negative number, and then multiplied by 
positive number that gives us uh, an upward pointing arrow and then if we plug in negative 3 we have negative 3 times sorry I'm spacing out a little bit we have a negative number multiplied by a negative number multiplied by a positive number uh, that gives us uh, that right there so one is our only answer this solution will be called semi-stable uh, because it's stable from one side over here uh, but it's unstable from another side and our final problem we are considering this initial value problem for which initial value y0 is the limit as t approaches infinity of y of t 1 so uh, instead of drawing everything out and uh, figuring out the whole behavior of the entire system all I'm going to do is just plug these values in individually and and see uh, what happens because we know that our solutions, our solutions for uh, y prime equals zero, are y equals zero, y equals one, and y equals two. So um, actually, I think I think we will do the whole thing. I, I kind of lied. Let's see. We have zero, one, two. If we have negative two, if we plug in negative two over here, we will have a uh, positive value out here and then the square will always give us a positive value and uh, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4 negative 4 so that's another negative value and uh, we'll have an arrow pointing that way uh, then for y is equal to 0 0.5 we will have um, a negative number multiplied by a positive number multiplied by a negative number there we go and right now we can we can stop and in fact I didn't need to do uh, this first this first step at all really we just needed to test the two sides of one y equals one uh, to see which one of them flowed towards it or away from it and I can tell you you can go check this for yourself that on the other side of y equals one we will get another arrow uh, pointing in the right hand direction and so any solutions that start between 0 and 1 will flow up to 1 as time goes on. If this is the direction of time uh, passing, and there's our solution curve, it's, it's all kind of sideways, sorry about that. Uh, but then if we start anywhere above 1, below 2, we'll flow up to 2. And so that gives us an answer of 0 0.001. If we start there, uh, this constant motion will push us up to one, it's time uh, approaches infinity.